I want to talk to you today about our church building reopening for gathered ministry. If you were to come by the building today or any of these days in the last several weeks, you would read this sign on the door. For the duration of this present crisis, the church doors will remain locked for the safety of the community. That's the way it's been. That's the way it has to be. It was a decision made back in March. When the sign was posted, the doors were locked. None of us imagined they would be locked for this amount of time. None of us would imagine we would have to think about policies of reopening the gathered church. We've been helped in our thinking by an article that describes three different concepts of what's going on right now. The first way is to think about the concept as a blizzard. We know that once a blizzard was, is over, things get cleaned up and everybody comes back. Things are returned to the way they have always been. Well, many thought this was the way it was going to be at the closure, including myself. None of us thinks that's the way it's going to be now. There will not be a quick return to life as we knew it. This is not a blizzard experience. The second idea is to think of it in the concept of a, a season, a season of winter. Seasons are interesting because on the calendar it moves immediately from the season of spring to summer or winter to spring. But we know in reality that's not the way a season works. We have some days that seem like spring and some days that seem like winter. There's a wrestling back and forth, not really sure which season it is. If you don't look at the calendar, you can't tell. Well, that's the kind of way we need to look at this pandemic now. It is a season. It is a season of good news one day and not so good news the next day. We cannot set a clear date when things will be a part of the new season, when the reopening or the regathering will come. Presently, we hear the pandemic might last as long as the fall. Ugh. A third way to think about the situation is as an ice age. No one wants to think about this possibility because an ice age lasts for years. It has a devastating effect on climate and on people and on culture and life as we know it. I suppose it's possible that this is an ice age, but we're not prepared to go in that direction right now. Well, we know that this is not a blizzard, and we're hopeful that this is not an ice age. We do know it is a season, and the tradition of gathering again will be a process of gathering from one season to the next. We will need to figure out when and how we will gather again. Right now, it's important for all of you to know what it is we're doing and what it is that we're planning there are five things I want you to note. The first one is that we have assembled a team of leaders together, of medical people and ministry people, in order to help us figure out what's the best way and the safest way for us to go through this process of regathering. That group is joining me is Laura Conant and Eric Lindsay and Greg Morrissey and Raquel Stockbauer. We've already met. We continue to meet. Second thing is the team has agreed to listen to the recommendation and guidelines of the CDC and government authorities in our local area. What they say is what we're going to listen to. Presently, we're making four recommendations about our ministry and of our gathering. Those four recommendations are quite simple and very obvious. We've all heard them. Number one, if you're sick, please stay home. The second is we need to maintain social distancing even after we gather together. We need to figure out how to do that. Number three, we're suggesting, as everyone is, that masks be worn here in the gathering of people to the church again. And, of course, we're talking about proper sanitizing of hands and so forth. Number three, recommendations will be given to three ministry groups after this team has gotten together. The elders will talk about it, the deacons will talk about it, and the church council will talk about it. So we can find out the best way to go about doing ministry and keeping safe. Number three, our gathering will take place in phases. We will not be starting everything all up, all at the same time, all at once. We'll have to figure out how we do that and who gathers what group. And number five, when we do gather for worship, gathered worship together, we plan to do live streaming of the worship services. That way those who cannot or should not attend will be able to stay in time and in touch with worship as the gathered gathers. We're grateful to know in these days of the Lord's saving grace, of his providential care. 
We know it from the scriptures, and we know that from personal history and church history. History is full of occasions that interrupted the routines of Christian people and raised questions about whether the church would survive. Each time, though, God refined the church, refocused the church, and strengthened the church to do the unimaginable ministry. We're trusting him to be accomplishing the same thing right now. So stay tuned. There's so much that the authorities still do not know, which makes it impossible for us to predict anything about dates for reopening or policies to follow when there is a reopening. We do want you to know that we are working on it. We're praying that the Lord will get the glory of all things, as I am sure you're praying as well. Stay faithful.